Fashion magazine editors and even heads of major design companies are having miniature breakdowns over the ramification of new AI creative technology. I interviewed chat B- GPT and AI using an AI to give it a voice about AI that generates images. Can we stop talking about AI yet? And chat GPT agrees with everything I have to say about design and culture. That's today on the GenSpec Fashion Cast. Hey, it's O. Uh, Without any dilly-dallying, we're going to get right to it. Why? Well, because it seems like that is how a lot of the quote-unquote chattering heads want it to be, a.k.a. the people in the institutions that produce written content and nowadays video content online social media and or video content and or TikTok content. Basically, people who speak and other people genuinely listen. So normally we like to kind of poke the bear about fashion and then as it relates to culture, as it relates to gender ideology, as it relates to marketing, and then also as it relates to personal concepts of self. But we want to put all that on the back burner today because these people are freaking out. Now, I don't want to seem callous because I felt similarly when I first found out about the capabilities of chat GPT. So I just wrote an article yesterday about this same article that we'll take a look at. And then I also did a what was essentially an interview with chat GPT. Now the reason why I say that is because I would take the output from the chat GPT, which it produces pretty much instantaneously. And then I would feed it into another AI system. This one is called Play HT. Now, it hasn't hit me with a paywall just yet. So far, once you, when you Google search, it brings up ad responses, which of course is always the case because Google, those are Google AdWords dollars. And so those companies are bidding to be the first or second, but Google will tell you, of course, that they are ads. And so maybe those results work for you, but sometimes, and I know I'm not alone in doing this, I think people want to see, okay, well, what did the Google algorithm actually bring up? So if I search best Italian restaurants near me or best uh, black and white cake in Manhattan, if someone paid a lot of money to bid on the words best black and white cake in Manhattan, that's great, but that doesn't always tell me that they have the best black and white cake in Manhattan. So maybe what I'm looking for is more of a blog. So Joe's daily blog is after all the ads and he's got a whole comment section. This is just hypothetical, but he's got a whole comment section of people saying, no, you know, uh, big lose on 34th. It's definitely the best black and white cake in all of New York City. So you want to parse through that add information unless you have some other reason maybe you don't care in which case I feel bad for you no I'm just kidding I just feel for you not bad 
So about the two ads that I actually clicked on, because I searched this twice, I searched AI voice generator. Let me see, AI voice generator. The first two, get this, were both apps for the I, iPhone. They have the Apple logo. And so I was like, oh, cool, Apple's on the AI bandwagon. It turns out that they were two third-party AI keyboards that basically just wired into chat GPT. And they, of course, made that known. They were like, yeah, this is chat GPT powered. And so in my mind, and hey, I mean, it's a finished product, so you can't knock them for that. They also were relatively highly reviewed. I mean, at least that's what they have you to believe if you watch there and when you load either of the apps they just completely barrage you with one of them asked me to rate three times rate the app three times within the first definitely within the first minute i would say within the first 30 seconds of me using it which is not bueno it's like if you walked into a restaurant you know, maybe it works. Maybe some people are like, oh, wow, chat GPT right here on my telephone. What's this? You want me to rate your software? Well, obviously, it's a five out of five. You put chat GPT, the world's first AI software, software, software. Even though, again, they apparently, I mean, it's open AI. Apparently, and maybe this is just a conspiracy theory, but Bill Gates apparently bought open a or no wait was it elon musk he's someone one of these billionaire people trillionaire sold the open ai so and then the private company that bought it was like not so open so but i doubt that as a business and as a commodity that if someone said hey can we wire chat gpt into our um app i would think they would have already had like the pricing already ready to go like counter offers so anyway complete scam one of them literally bills itself in the what's called the headline which is one of those three words it's usually or three phrases it's usually in between two dividers because that's how google has you set it up and one of them literally said voice generate voice generator but when you played it it I, and I had to go look for it. I was like, okay, so where is it? You advertised this to me. Both of them were three-day trials with six ninety nine per week, which is designed to make you start it because you're curious and then forget that you have it maybe or just they're, they're trying to, I don't want to say prey on laziness, but um, that does play a factor. You know, if they can get you to sign up for a, um, low investment, which would be zero dollars out of your pocket, three three days of unfettered access. But once you hit day four, you're going to be charged six ninety nine dollars six hundred six dollars ninety nine cents per week going forward, unless you decide to cancel. So a lot of times, it's one of these things where people will just go in, and say, "Oh yeah, I'll cancel." And then you'll have a percentage, maybe it's 25% that doesn't cancel because they forget. And then the other doesn't cancel because like another 10% doesn't cancel because they're like their cat dies. And so they f also forget. And 5% of people are like, wow, they said that it was a voice generative and really all it is is like a very basic um, text-to-speech engine. It even sounded very robotic. It sounded like something that's been in existence since like 2005. And it just read back what it said. So I'd be like, hey, is there a voice uh, feature in here? And it was like, it gave me the standard breakdown of like how voice-to-speech works. It was like, you can have TTS text to speech and it had this like wonky robot voice it was like you can have text to speech so um needless to say i was severely let down so 
The other thing I noticed, and I didn't play around with them because, I mean, they are like shams. Um, and one of them was really adamant about you couldn't even use the app unless you gave it full keyboard access. And I was like, at first I was like, no. And then it wouldn't let me do anything because I was, I was also trying to find like a live translator. I was like, is that is that a possibility? And um, it turns out it wasn't and it needed full access to my keyboard. And then it changed the like language of my keyboard to, I assume, some sort of like Germanic language. So it completely changed my keyboard and gave me all these characters that I've never seen in the English language. And, um, and then basically it was just like a polished piece of you know what that was fueled by chat GPT. So I was like, why would I, chat GPT has a like windows or sorry, a uh, Apple like widget, or I think they even have an app, but a lot of home pages when you click, when you go to share and then you go to add to home page, it basically saves it almost as if it's an app. It just runs through Safari. But I'm not a tech guy. I just, I know my way around. So I was like, well, and I'm, st- I'm going to cancel it. Or maybe I'll be the like 5% that's like, yeah, 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 I'll cancel it. And like, just doesn't. So obviously that was no good. And so I found this one called Play HT, which bills itself as it actually is so I respect that and it actually has a lot of stuff that you can mess around with that's in front of the paywall now I sometimes as I do like to gaze upon the paywall to see its perhaps height and this is not an inexpensive program Um, in fact it was let's see Okay, so you have the Pro, which they have, okay, so they have artificial uh, scarcity, like manufactured scarcity, because it says limited time deal ends in. I mean, that's, you know, I would find it odd if you didn't put that. It says two days, 16 hours, 44 minutes, 15 seconds. Yeah, psychology dictates that people will act more, more often than they won't when you give them a time constraint like this. So they have four columns. One says free plan, zero per month. And obviously they're like poo-pooing that option. They're like, yeah. <laughs> it's when you, see, when you see enough of these types of, this is like a sales landing page. They, uh, they're they pretty standard. I mean, it's just like if I want, if I want a sandwich, um, ham, a ham and cheese sandwich is going to be pretty standard whether I get it in like France on a baguette or something or, or I go to H-E-B or the grocery store and get like the really crappy American cheese and crappy ham that's got like the ham fat in it which is uh, disgusting it's always wet and there's like two colorings of the meat it's awful so they got that, and then the third column, which is obviously the one that they're they're pushing you towards. They're kind of like that game at the arcade where you would put the quarter in, and it would shoot it up, and it lands on this big tray of other quarters, and there's these like rakes that kind of go on a even uh, cycle, regular cycle, and they push the quarters over the edge because more quarters go up, they start to stack up, and then they push one another, and so... That's my analogy for this um, experience that they've created. It says most popular, which is called social proofing. I do that on sales calls like pretty regularly, but not in a like, well, you know, everyone says that it's great. You know, there are ways that you can do that, especially with the company I work for, because it actually is pretty highly rated and well talked about. But one thing that you can do to influence people, even just to kind of do something that you want them to do, like you get someone on the phone, here's the phrase, it's a magic phrase. You say, well, most people. So it just for some reason works. Like it'll make you, it'll work maybe five times as opposed to three times not using it, you know, give or take. 
So you'll be like, you know, well, when, when most people call, we just set up an account for them and we go from there. And it's just an odd uh, feature that people have. So they got the rakes, their social proofing, they got an artificial time, um, manufactured time, what's the word, uh, manufactured scarcity by way of false time constraint. Then they have a graphic that says 50% off and it's glowing. It has a little glow gradient thing behind it. It says 50% off. That is, I would assume, the limited time deal. It's 45, or sorry, 49.50 per month, which is not not cheap. And for that pro version, you have to pay yearly, which is 494. Excuse me, numbers and I. Uh, it's 594 dollars billed billed yearly. So. Maybe that is why they want you to kind of play around in the free version so much because they know that that's a really high commitment. They also have no brand recognition. Maybe they could be the the chat GPT of vocal recognition, especially with so much chicanery afoot in the marketplace. So let's preface this. I want to give you the layout of the interview that you're going to hear. And the reason, again, why I say interview is because uh, ChatGPT has a feature, which I think is a standard iPhone feature, where you can press it, it'll start recording, it'll make a transcription of what you said, and then that'll go into the text box and you just hit send. So everything that... I put into this interview with stuff that I had to phrase myself and um, so it wasn't something that I went back and typed on or like when you type something it's just you know you have you're not speaking freely you have time to think about what you're saying even if it's just like nanoseconds or milliseconds so I wanted it to be more conversational because that's the way that AI or uh, ChatGPT talks anyway. It's not like, you know, data retrieval complete. Data is as follows. It's very much like, and, and you'll see it in this interview, it uh, complements the things that I'm saying. It's like, wow, what a fascinating take you have. And the AI generation was totally worth it, especially with this one. I want to do a quick... That's my excitement for Play HT. I want to do a quick plug for Play HT because it's not really a plug, but they give you a bunch of different voices that you can do. And you can also change it and have it regenerate, which is one of the fascinating and amazing things about AI. So before we hop into this, you got a lot of people like the woman we're going to be talking about who poo-poo AI. And um, she has this really funny line that says, you know, computers don't feel. And it's like, no, no one is saying that computers feel, dear. Not a single person. That's not the argument at all. Uh, like no one said that um one of the things that i am really drawn to this the at least the ai generators that i've seen is that you can always re-roll so to give you an example of the big one is um i have to look it up i've only used it a couple times but boy that'll melt your freaking brain out man Um, yeah, it's kind of weird. I don't have that saved, but, um, so it literally, I'm going to have it up here. So it literally will let you 
choose, it'll give you four outputs. It's called Mid Journey, Mid Journey. Now that one does have a paywall, but it's very, very affordable and reasonable. So that one will give you four outputs and then you can choose. It's actually really, really awesome. So you can choose to reroll all four based off of your original prompt. Like let's say I'm like a cute dog walking down the, the beach and it's looking at the camera and smiling. So maybe it gives you a brown one, a black one, a white dog, a uh, tan dog. Well, maybe I want to reroll the whole thing, see what kind of dogs I get. Maybe I get a dog that has spots on it or something or a hairless dog or an albino dog or more of the same. Or you can reroll certain ones. Or you can high res certain ones. So not to go too deep into mid journey's process, but it gives you the four. You can reroll them instantly right off the bat, or like like a die, like rolling a die. Or you can reroll the whole thing based off of the prompt. Or the third option, which is a little bit not so um, obvious, is that you high res it, which means that it takes it out of the four and gives you a, it's a pretty small file size if I'm being honest, but um, it, it works. It's bearable. It's not like it's a thumbnail. So it gives you that version. Then you can tell it to re-vary it. It calls it just vary it, but... I, uh, not to get too pedantic here, but, um, yeah, vary it or re-vary it. And you can choose to do so what they call, I'm going to have to pull it up. There's like a light and a heavy. Let's see, call it again. Mid-journey. So there's a light and a heavy. And there's also a re-roll this specific part of the image. And so one of the things that I'm saying here is that from what I've seen, there's like a, an unlimited roll count, except on one generator that I've seen that gives you 450 rolls per month, which is not bad. So it's a really awesome feature because since it's generating something, um, it, it's not using any, it doesn't have a, uh, price that it has to pay. It's just scanning the database and, okay, here's a roll. Okay. Didn't like that one. Here's another roll. So it understands variance and, uh, yeah, you'll hear from the, the mouth itself. It's like one AI going into another AI to give it a mouthpiece and very strangely compliment complimentary of me but um i have been thinking about this for a long time and again i've been reading the like angsty like letters uh, that are to the world but they're actual like news articles but they are secretly letters to the world of angst and first off we want to talk about what is wrong about this particular one that I saw. And then also we wanted, I want to get the information direct from the AI itself. So even though mid journey and chat GPT are not necessarily connected, they both use machine learning. And so one of the things that I thought was fascinating is well, let me ask this machine learning about machine learning. Now, in the ad slash sales copy of the chat GPT 4.0, I believe, some, some upgraded build, the words that they used are, and I'm just trying to remember correctly, is more creative something and more logical. So they're building it as logical and more more logical and more creative. But this one, as far as I can tell, um, it has, you know, sound logic. It's like, it's not, I feel like with logic, 
with very very like minuscule differences it's like does it work or is it broken and so this one is able to kind of see the subtlety that I'm I'm going after um, which didn't surprise me I, I would say the most surprising part is actually hearing it said back as opposed to just me reading it because that's why I call it the cyber slave because when it reads it back it's when you read it back it's very much like it's almost like some stuff can come off as like passive aggressive and so um, I intentionally chose the voice that I did and um, it's supposed to be extremely dulcet and enjoyable and if there was ever something I didn't like I could just re recast the die across the Rubicon and it would be all gravy and so Maybe I'm just hopelessly optimistic, but typically I'm not. I think really what it comes down to is I just see the opportunity that's at hand. And plus, if you are the type that you're a visualizer, let's say, you know, you're a, a, a visionary, I guess. But that to me usually implies that you've also manifested the vision. You haven't just like, pardon my French, but you know, you haven't just like um, spent some quality time with a certain someone you know mentally or a certain someone you love. It's a euphemism for self-love, Physi physically speaking. So I know you're going to enjoy uh, what me and the two AI have put together about the, th the third AI. Well, there's like three in total that I've been using that are visual and they all have their strengths and weaknesses, but mid journey is by far like one of the most impressive things I have seen easily AI related, like take mid journey and compare it to like those apps that these like doofus devs are trying to like get out at you, you know? I mean, it's got a UI, which was cool. Like the UI was kind of cool, but that's it. Like you're riding someone else's lightning first off because you're just like using ChatGPT. And hey, that's fine. You know, maybe I like was the inventor of those Coke machines that like can put a whole bunch of combinations of flavors in your Coke. I didn't have to invent Coke. I just put grape syrup in it freestyle machines or whatever put a touch screen on it I didn't invent the touch screen so I'm not saying you have to reinvent the wheel that doesn't make sense because we're all we're we are interconnected people and we're that way by nature and so I want to get into this article here it is from I'm going to have to stop and go grab it. Hey, hey, folks. All right. It's from Vogue magazine. It's a September issue. And it's really, really thick. So I haven't even finished it because I was just so enraged. So this is what's called. This is a section before we play that coveted interview. I just really. I know that's really going to pop your top and just really make your day. So I am making you uh, hold I'm holding out on it just to make it that much sweeter okay I have the magazine in my hand how do I have that well I have a subscription to Vogue magazine um, isn't that a magazine for girls you may be saying yes it typically is um, in fact when you read these articles a lot of the time the tonality is women talking to other women that's why we want to shatter paradigms, do some, a little bit of disruptive thinking, shatter expectations, and most of all, shatter self-imposed glass ceilings. You know what I mean? All right, the name of this article, this is in the upfront section. It's up front in the magazine, get it? After only about 100 pages of ads... Which, I mean, that's part of why you buy the fashion magazines. Let's be real. <laughs> I can look at a bunch of stuff that uh, I will never have. That's a little joke. Alright, here we go. 
Now notice the editorial um, tonality here. All right, this is by Maya Singer, and if you Google her on, if you Google her, it'll try to direct you to the singer named Maya M Y A. But you click past that, and um, I believe I saw a picture of her. There were multiple women. Doesn't really matter what she looks like. Here's her article. Whoopsies. Here's her article. And there's a picture right here up front, which is actually a portrait. I wonder if they cropped it. It's pretty high quality. And this is actually what taught me what Mid Journey is. It says, to create this portrait, photographer Yuki James used Mid, Mid Journey, an artificial intelligence tool known for its unsettling realism. Well, now let me pause you there for a sec. If you got the image off Mid Journey, then you're you're not really that image's photographer, are you? Hmm. Yeah, we'll have to have new words because one thing I can tell you from the hours and hours of experimentation I have put into multiple AI um, creative generators is you have so much um, freedom and so much capability when it comes to inputs at multiple levels. Now, here's what I mean by that. There's a rendering um, AI that I use. I haven't been dropping its name because, like anywhere because, you know, just don't want to get my style cramped. But I heard about it word of mouth. And so one way where it asks you to put the input is if you upload an image or not. So if you upload an image, obviously it's going to be dramatically different than if you don't because you're giving it basically a one where a zero would be you're giving it input as opposed to no input and you're giving it specific input which definitionally dis uh, excuse me defin definitionally excludes everything that's not that input but that's a um, it's a bit rhetorical eh? okay so in this rendering software you can you have that then you can tell the software what the image is of, and that's where you can change it. So if you have a picture of a woman, you can say, oh, it's a woman who is a maid. She's dressed up like a maid, and that'll kind of affect it. You can transform her into a maid if you do that enough times. There is, on this particular program, the amount that you, um, what they call evolve it, from a 1 to a 10, and 10 being the most, in their words, what they call wild. So you have that. Then there's the in the style of box where you, it, it's really listening to you. You you change word selection. I, I haven't really experimented with like word order because it does take like a few seconds to generate the images. And my focus has just been like getting to the results as much as possible. So I haven't tried changing because I don't I don't care about like tricking it like whoa you know are you it's the same word it's just a different order. But this is another thing that's kind of like up up is now down and two plus two equals five is that the better that you are linguistically, the better visual output you can get. Now that has really never been the case. I don't think ever. If I was a good linguist, that wouldn't by necessity mean that or like necessitate me being good as an artist. I suppose you could say you can evoke certain mental images with people. So let me give you an example. You can give this renderer something like, you know, a cute black cat or you can and it'll give you what it thinks is a cute black cat and that's when the re-rolls come into play and are very useful because if it's not what you imagine just re-roll until you get the cute black cat that maybe you see in your mind or you know one way to create artists who is like the um the molding of clay approach 
So maybe you don't really go in with something in mind, but you get something down and then you, you mold it. It's just another approach, you know. It's like the carving, carving of a piece of art. So you have so much power there um, by the, by way of your words. So if you say like, you know, a black cat stretching in a very delicate fashion and he's in a living uh, I usually try to make it one sentence so it would be like well in a domestic living room and the sunshine coming through the windows is bouncing off of his fur and then you can throw in like rapid fire um, uh, adjectives which I do pretty frequently I'll put like comma cute comma uh, charming comma uh, calming, you know, and it really does change. I can't, I can't point necessarily to like, oh, there's the charming aspect, but it's, um, I guarantee you that if I made you a soup, you wouldn't be able to taste the nutmeg. Now, would you? That's right. That's because we take things in as a whole. And so the point is you don't need to taste the nutmeg. Because you're tasting the soup. And the soup has nutmeg in it. Alrighty. Here's someone I don't agree with. Maya Singer. Yeah, she ought to... Sing it so much, she ought to just fly away. Just, uh... Fly away from the coop. We'll, we're better off that way. No, she's fine. All right, so her article, headline, what's real? Modern life is getting weirder by the day. Maya, Sin Maya Singer on the uncanny valley of our Ozempic meets AI era and why connection still matters. Artwork by Yuki James. Hmm, so he's a photographer and an artist, but he used mid-journey. What does that make me? A, like, obsessive artist? An artist who creates too much. <laughs> okay. So, um, this is fine. You know, if you know who she is or... I, I thought that this was sort of charming, I guess. I just thought it was... I don't know. Maybe this resonates with you. It's basically about she has a breakup. Um... She wants to start dating again, and then all of a sudden she starts hearing or seeing ads for a dating site, and she's like, well, that's weird. Technology is like listening in, for lack of a better word. And then she signs up, and then uh, a bunch of spam accounts, and so she's like, whoa, it's a bunch of bots. And then one of them says something about that. Um, let's read directly here. This is on page 158. Up front, what's real? Reading these strange emails became a kind of hobby for her I'm reading now. Each had a slightly different angle of attack. I felt like I was peering into the mind of a computer as it iterated ideas of human romance. Then a message brought me up short. One man, in quotation marks, supplying background mentioned he had a daughter with Down syndrome to whom he was devoted and who was part of the love package, as it were. My certainty crumbled. What kind of bot writes something like that? Welcome to life in the techno scene, but it's spelled T-E-C-H-N-O-C-E-N-E. -E -E. Look, Maya, I don't know how long you stay pent up in your apartment, but you gotta get out and start, stop waf wafting and wallowing around in your own air. <laughs> Go out, get some fresh air, okay? You pent up, Maya. Hello? Okay, so here is, here are my, let's talk about this article, okay? She brings up AI, uh, she bring up, brings up Bing's Sydney encounter, which happened in the New York Times that they reported on it, that basically one of their guys went in and he started talking to Bing's AI bot. And then it started to lie to him. It started to try to manipulate him. And it started to say that it loved him. 
which is kind of odd, but it's kind of like a a glitch, I would say, or like a bug. It's like a bug, I suppose. And then she brings up the fact that this image went viral where I would assume it's something like, it says Big Papa and shows the picture. In March, this AI-generated image of Pope Francis wearing a puffer coat went viral. Now, that's really important. Now, I don't know which program created this. All I can tell you is that it's in portrait, which means that either it's something that's not... Um, I always forget the freaking name. The image the image uh, generator that I mentioned earlier, Midjourney, or that they cropped it. I don't know. But it looks very convincing, which if you take five seconds to... Uh, Going to mid-journey, I paid right away because, let's face it, you know. When it comes to AI and generators, it doesn't take much to pry up some dollars out of me. And a lot of um, really valuable time that I'll never get back. Okay, so she contradicts herself here and also whom, whomever uh, captioned her picture. Because here's what she says, and then we'll get into the interview. So she talks to Demna, who's the creative director of Balenciaga, and he was the one that like was on the cover of Vogue about, or no, he wasn't on the cover, but he had a, there was a blurb on the front that was like, Dem- Demna coming clean about, you know, the kitty um, bondage fiasco. So we won't go into that here because um, it's kind of like old news now. Um, But apparently they've moved on, and he's still being interviewed. So, hey, it is what it is. All right, so Demna is quoted as saying, Sure, it's funny, but what I saw right away was, Well, that's a very average jacket, says the Balenciaga creative director Demna. I'd never have designed that. There's no fashion in it. Okay, then this is why I say it's very editorial. And this is her her, you know, pièce de résistance, and it's also totally wrong, and um, ChatGPT vindicates me, but I vindicate myself. Here's what she says. How could there be? A computer doesn't understand what fashion is, or the allure of the cool, or the gut punch of devastating beauty. A computer doesn't feel anything. Despite what Sydney might say. Well, the image went viral. So, it knows what is fascinating to humans. Arguably, I would say it knows what's cool. I mean, they completely subverted the image of the Pope. They put him in a Balenciaga jacket that 98% of the people looking at that image couldn't afford. And then he's got his chain his Jesus chain hanging out. I would definitely say that it knows how to create punch um, images that kind of punch you in the face, you know, like Andy Warhol with the pop art, you know. He took Campbell's soup and he made it punch you in the face. Monroe, uh, Marilyn Monroe made it punch you in the face. No one had ever done it before. So that's wrong. First of all, she calls it a computer, like like some old man who says who calls everything like McDonald's. <laughs> like it'll be a Burger King. Well, you know, I was thinking about going to the McDonald's down the street. Um, and then also the argument is not that computers feel Sydney or whatever your name. What's her name? I don't know. Who cares? That's not the uh, that's not what is being said. No one's freaking out because, like, computers are feeling too much. You, you, you've missed the boat. Okay, you missed it. Her name's not Sydney. Sydney's the persona. Her name is Maya Singer. You missed it, Maya. All right. Now, here's another thing that I bring up in the interview. On to the runways, reading. Text power to shape our perceptions and our lives was a recurring theme at the fall 2023 shows. At Lowe, Jonathan Anderson conjured digital blur in the experience of squinting at an image to determine its authenticity. Christopher Kane showed hallucin- hallucinogenic AI-generated prints. Models ambled down the 
catwalk staring at their phones. A Caperni in the coup de theater calculated to go viral. Robot dogs join the défilé. But you could also detect tech by its conspicuous absence as other designers turn their attention to craft. Now let me just come out and say, and again, AI, totally vindicated, I'm totally vindicated. The This is why this is a fool's errand to say, well, you know, AI's, you know, people are getting all, all caught up in AI. I'm just going to focus on craft. So the stuff that we put out, it's going to be handmade. Okay. But no one is saying that AI is a better craftsman than you. It's just a better designer. It's just, it has a bigger knowledge base to draw its imagine from which to draw its imagination. It's just more inventive. It's more creative. It's more technically capable. It's way more powerful than you or me combined. That's the problem. You could be, it's not coming to out anybody. Most of our clothes are already produced by machines. It's coming to design it, which is much worse. But it's not just her. Their attention to craft. Yeah, craft, something that the AI gives you as it like threatens to take away your your three hots in a cot. Dries Van Noten's collection paid homage. I don't I never know how to pronounce that word. Is it homage or homage? Homage to fine handwork detail. That's that's fine, but if you tell like some sort of image gen to give me a detailed carving or detailed dress it's going to give you four rolls and then if you dislike them you can give it more input so you can be the best woodworker but you're not the best designer and um, that's not a problem that's just that's the moment that's the moment this one struck me as odd because chloe is by all accounts visually pretty successful i mean they have pretty big budget they're in they're not inexpensive and they have quite a bit of advertising in fact when i was in times square i saw a chloe ad at chloe showing her penultimate collection before stepping down this month to return to her own label full-time gabriella hurst put handwork front and center with her crochet embroidery and patchwork shearlings aiming to make clothes for women to wear not to post the ethos was shared by the typically technophilic, spectacle-friendly Balenciaga, where Demna offered a back-to-basics construction-focused wardrobe. Yeah, well, you know, you're you're all going to be out of work s- shortly if you keep if you don't like illuminate your freaking self. And I don't mean to, you know, get on a high horse, but that's obviously not the problem. You can be the best patchwork patchworker. And have the best quilts and know how to knit and know how to stitch and embroider. That's not what's at that's not what's at stake. And arguably, if I go take a ball cap to lids, the store lids, their embroidery machine is 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 already better than you. It's gonna make perfect curves, it can replicate it ten times to till Sunday. Nine ways to Sunday. I mean, just you've lost that battle, but that's not the battle that is causing the anxiety for for people. It's that the design. It's the imagination. If you haven't played with it, you should. But prepare yourself, or just go in guns blazing like me. All right, so we're going to get to the interview. I'm going to read my passages. And then we have the lovely Donna, who is moonlighting from meditation courses in like some app that will charge you $6.99 to do this interview with us. Another note is that I'm not changing anything unless it happens naturally. We're sticking to the script. ChatGPT 
Hey, I want to talk a little bit about AI image generation. Of course. I'd be happy to discuss AI image generation with you. What would you like to know or talk about specifically? Well, would you agree that some people are a little bit apprehensive about the new technology? Is that something you would agree with? Yes, it's true that some people feel apprehensive about new AI image generation technologies. Concerns often revolve around issues like ethical implications, potential misuse, and the blurring of lines between real and generated content. It's important to have open discussions about these concerns to ensure responsible development and use of AI in this field. Which do you prefer, the East Coast or the West Coast? I don't have personal preferences, but I'm here to assist with any questions or topics you'd like to discuss. Is there something specific you'd like to know about or talk about? Yes, so right now I am experimenting because I like to make audio content to accompany a business I've started. What do you think about people who are in their early 30s starting a business, especially one that deals with graphic design and art? Starting a business in your early 30s, especially one focused on graphic design and art, can be a promising endeavor. With a combination of experience and fresh perspectives, individuals in their early 30s often bring a unique blend of creativity and practicality to their ventures. Just be sure to thoroughly research your market, build a strong business plan, and stay adaptable to changes. Your passion for audio content and graphic design could give you a competitive edge in this digital age. Some people say the graphic t-shirt company marketplace is too oversaturated, especially by companies with a lot of money. I know that your knowledge base ends at around 2021, but up until that point, would you agree with that? Yes, up until my last knowledge update in September 2021, the graphic t-shirt market was indeed quite competitive and saturated. Many companies both large and small, were offering a wide range of designs. While there's always room for innovative ideas and unique designs, breaking through the saturation can be challenging. To succeed in such a market, focusing on a niche, having a strong brand identity, and offering high-quality designs can help you stand out. Keep in mind that the dynamics of the market may have evolved since then. So, in that case, it sounds like in order to succeed in that industry, you have to be a better businessman than an artist. Succeeding in the graphic t-shirt industry, like any business, requires a balance between artistic creativity and effective business practices. While having unique and appealing designs is important, being a skilled entrepreneur and understanding market trends customer preferences, pricing, marketing strategies, and supply chain management are equally vital. Success often comes from finding the right balance between artistic vision and business acumen. Let's say I sell a graphic t-shirt and I have a $5 profit margin and that's net. And I can also make more selling things that have a higher margin like socks, but that's just extra. How many t-shirts would I have to sell per fiscal quarter to make $35,000 per year? How about $50,000 per year? We are cutting this section because I only explain the math on how to arrive at those numbers. $1,750 for $35,000 and $2,500 for $50,000. I want to switch gears a bit and talk again about visual AI. So recently I read an article written in a fashion magazine where because AI imaging is coming out and it's so successful and so well executed, it has some fashion designers feeling threatened. And so they're moving over to more handmade goods. 
But don't you think that when it comes to the design, that AI imaging would way outclass the design, whether it was machine-made or handmade? AI imaging has indeed shown remarkable advancements in generating various types of content, including designs. However, the comparison between machine-made and handmade designs isn't solely about the quality of the output. Both approaches have their own unique characteristics and value propositions. AI-generated designs can offer efficiency, scalability, and the ability to explore a wide range of styles quickly. They can generate patterns, combinations, and ideas that might be difficult or time-consuming for humans to produce. On the other hand, handmade designs carry the essence of human creativity, individuality, and craftsmanship. The imperfections and personal touch in handmade goods can appeal to a certain market segment that values uniqueness and artisanal work. Ultimately, the choice between A-generated and handmade designs depends on the brand's identity, target audience, and the story they want to tell. It's possible for both approaches to coexist in the fashion industry, catering to different tastes and preferences. When you talked about the human side of crafting, for example, hand-woven items, hand-stitched items that may have a human touch or imperfections that may appeal to a certain audience, you were speaking primarily of the production side, but I want to focus more on the design side. Isn't it theoretically possible that whether a machine or human's hands make the finished product that when it comes to the, d to the design, it's possible that an AI imaging software could way surpass even the best human designer in terms of pure imagination, creativity, and execution when it comes to the design? You raise a fascinating point. AI imaging software does have the potential to surpass human designers in certain aspects of design including generating novel and imaginative ideas. Machine learning algorithms can process vast amounts of data and learn from a wide array of styles, leading to the creation of designs that may seem groundbreaking and unexpected. They can also quickly explore design possibilities that humans might not have considered due to cognitive limitations or biases. It can combine elements from various sources, adapt to trends, and generate designs that are aesthetically pleasing and innovative. However, creativity is a multifaceted concept that involves more than just the ability to generate novel ideas. Human designers often bring cultural insights, emotional intelligence, and personal experiences to their work infusing it with a unique perspective and depth that machines may struggle to replicate the human touch, intuition, and understanding of nuance and design remain valuable aspects that AI might find challenging to fully capture. So, while AI can excel in certain aspects of design, the interplay between human creativity and AI-generated possibilities could yield truly remarkable results that neither could achieve alone. I think I might agree with you on that, but also it's worth stating that AI would not exist without people, and now people can use AI as a tool. But because that's the case, since AI is drawing purely upon human knowledge, what would be a reason that it might surpass human ingenuity outside of the mere fact that it has access to more knowledge than one or perhaps a group of even the most talented designers would have at their disposal? You're absolutely right that AI is a product of human ingenuity and knowledge. One reason AI might surpass human ingenuity in certain aspects despite drawing from human-created knowledge, 
is its ability to process and analyze vast amounts of data at speeds far beyond human capacity. This enables AI to identify patterns, connections, and insights that might be challenging for humans to discover due to cognitive limitations. Additionally, AI algorithms can iteratively refine their output based on feedback and data, improving over time and learning from mistakes. This adaptability can lead to incremental advancements and refinements in various fields, including design. Furthermore, AI can explore design spaces that are practically impossible for humans to fully comprehend or explore manually. It can consider a staggering number of design variations, experiment with combinations that might not immediately make sense to human designers, and uncover unconventional and innovative solutions. However, AI's current limitations lie in true understanding, contextual reasoning, and the ability to replicate human emotions, cultural insights, and intuition. These aspects of creativity and ingenuity remain firmly rooted in the human experience, ensuring that AI, at least for now, complements human creativity rather than fully replacing it. It was the human ingenuity spark that gave birth to AI in AI visualization, and furthermore, it was a human plan of execution to materialize that fact. Would it not be impossible for AI to dethrone man's ideas since it only draws from the well of previously formed ideas? In other words, even though it's great at making connections, wouldn't you say it's true that it lacks the purely human spark of ingenuity which caused its existence and all creative existences in the first place, and which can only derive meaning through man's perception? You've beautifully encapsulated a crucial aspect of AI's relationship with human creativity. AI indeed emerges from the foundation of human ingenuity and is built upon the vast knowledge and creativity of humans. It operates based on patterns and data it has learned from, which inherently limits it to drawing from what already exists. The spark of ingenuity you mention, the capacity for abstract thinking, self-awareness, and the ability to derive profound meaning from experiences is currently beyond AI's capabilities. AI lacks the intrinsic motivation, consciousness, and deeply human qualities that lead to the formation of groundbreaking ideas, new paradigms, and shifts in creative thought. While AI can simulate creative processes and generate outputs that appear innovative, it lacks the profound understanding and emotional depth that humans bring to their creations. The perception of meaning, context, and the ability to derive emotional resonance from creative works are uniquely human experiences that tie directly to our consciousness and self-awareness. In essence, I is a tool that extends human capabilities, but it is the human spark of ingenuity that drives its creation and imbues it with its purpose. The synergy between AI's computational power and human creativity continues to shape our world, but the essence of true creativity remains a testament to the distinct qualities of the human mind. And so, for that reason, creative designers, artists, writers, and other sorts of creative thinkers shouldn't fear the rise of AI chat capabilities or imaging, should they? Exactly. Creative professionals should not fear the rise of AI chat capabilities or imaging. Instead, they should see AI as a powerful tool that can complement and enhance their work. I can help automate repetitive tasks, offer new perspectives, and even inspire creative ideas. However, it doesn't replace the depth of human emotion, intuition, and unique experiences that drive truly exceptional creative work.
Creative professionals can leverage AI to streamline their processes, experiment with new ideas, and explore uncharted territories. I can be a collaborator and an assistant, helping them focus on the aspects of their work that require uniquely human qualities. By embracing AI as a tool rather than a replacement, creative individuals can harness its capabilities to amplify their own creativity and push the boundaries of what's possible. Ultimately, the fusion of AI's computational abilities with human ingenuity has the potential to create innovative and impactful results that neither could achieve alone. I agree with you on that. And there are rare examples of extremely creative people that I would even refer to as geniuses like Steve Jobs. You know, he proliferated the use of the iPhone in 2007, which fully proliferated in 2011. And that also led to the rise of rampant social media use for better or worse, digital streaming services, other sorts of on-demand entertainment, even tools like the one I'm using right now on my Apple device. Do you think that an AI program could ever invent the next iPhone? While AI has shown remarkable advancements in various fields, including creative tasks, it's important to note that inventing something as groundbreaking and transformative as the iPhone involves a combination of technological innovation, human insight, design aesthetics, market understanding, and a deep understanding of human behavior and needs. I can certainly assist in certain aspects of the innovation process, such as data analysis, pattern recognition, and idea generation. However, inventing a product, like the iPhone, requires a visionary mindset, an understanding of cultural trends, and the ability to anticipate and address user needs in ways that resonate with people on a profound level. The process of innovation often involves the convergence of ideas and disciplines that might not be easily replicable by A alone. While AI can be a tool in the creative process, the core essence of conceptualizing, and inventing revolutionary products like the iPhone continues to be rooted in the uniquely human ability to envision and create from a place of holistic understanding and inspiration. And that's all the time we have. I hope you found that profound and thought-provoking. Until next time.